everyone, and welcome to my art studio. Today is such an exciting day because any minute now, it's here! This is a project I've been dying to create for so long, and now it's finally happening. Let me show you what's inside. This should give you a clue. And here we have a big piece and some smaller pieces. So let's put all this together and see how it looks. Ta-da! In this video, I'm going to decorate this life-size paper mache llama. It stands 49 inches tall, so it's more like a baby llama, because adult llamas are usually a bit taller. But still, this is a pretty fun size to work with. I've always loved llamas and alpacas, so when I saw this paper mache llama online, I couldn't pass up the chance to paint all over it with my favorite bright colors and patterns. If you're familiar with my art, then you know that I love vibrant, saturated colors and lots and lots of details. I've never actually painted on a 3D object this big before, so I am a little nervous, but mostly I'm just so excited for this challenge. So let's see what happens. Now it's time to glue the pieces together. Starting with the legs, I'm just adding some glue to the end part and then sliding it right in. This part is pretty messy, but it's easy to mop up the excess glue with my fingers. The legs are done, so now it's time to glue on the final piece. I'll let this dry overnight and come back tomorrow. So it's a day later and the glue is all nice and dry now and the llama feels pretty sturdy. Now it's time to cover up these little gaps where the pieces fit together to make it all look seamless. I decided to use light modeling paste for this, mostly because I already have some. Let's see how well this works on paper mache. It's a little thick, but I can use my fingers to push it into those gaps. In hindsight, it actually might have been easier to use caulking to fill in these gaps, but I think this light modeling paste will still get the job done. Now it's time to gesso. I'm using a spray gesso, so I put on my protective gear. Long sleeves, a respirator, and safety goggles. And of course, my hat. You should always spray in a well-ventilated area. So to be even more cautious, I'm gonna spray gesso this llama outside so that I don't have to worry as much about fumes. I'm using white gesso as a primer to create a white layer over the whole llama. Oops, I sprayed a bit too much there. This layer of gesso will make the paper mache much easier to paint on so that when I add colors later, they'll look really vibrant and saturated. Now that the gesso is dry, it's time to add color. Spray paints are a quick and easy way to add a base coat of different colors all over the llama. I love how vibrant these colors are, especially this fluorescent pink. I'm not totally sure how I want this llama to look yet. I just know that I want it to be really bright and colorful. And my plan is to add lots of fun details and designs on top of this base layer. Yay, the spray painting is all done. We're back inside and now it's time for the really fun part. I'm gonna start with the legs and use a colored pencil to sketch out my design. My plan is for all four legs to have the same design, so by sketching it out first, I can help make sure the sketches are all even and consistent. So I finished sketching in the leg designs and now it's time to start painting. This is the part I've been really looking forward to the most, using acrylic paint to color in all these details. The paints I'm using are mostly by Golden and Liquitex, two of my favorite go-to paint brands. I also have some tubes of Utrecht acrylic paint, which is also a good brand. The brushes I use are usually just cheap paint brushes that I've picked up over the years. I'm really not that fussy when it comes to paint brushes for acrylics. A palette knife also helps for mixing colors. It's really funny having this llama upside down and painting the legs. It somehow feels a bit silly, but having the legs up in the air like this makes it much easier to paint. Here I go with another pink. 
If you haven't noticed yet, I love pink, especially bright fluorescent pink. Hey, I was a kid in the 80s, and hot pink was always my favorite color. I guess some things never change. People often ask me how I choose my colors. It's mostly instinct. I don't consciously think about the color wheel, but if you do, you'll notice, for example, that so far, this blue is the first cool color that I've painted on this entire llama. I mostly use warm colors in my art, like yellows, oranges, and pinks. But adding pops of cool colors, like aqua blue and pale green, really helps create an eye-catching contrast. Now it's time to add some smaller details. Posca paint pens are perfect for this. They contain acrylic paint and they're pretty opaque, so they cover over the bottom layer really well. It's actually a lot quicker to paint in these small details using a paint marker than it would be to use a paintbrush. And with the paint marker, I can be much more precise. The legs are all done, and I feel like we're off to a great start. So now it's time to work on the back and side. My idea is to draw a mandala that wraps around both sides of the llama. To pull this off, I need the mandala to look symmetrical, so I sketch it in first. Sketching these designs on the body is actually a lot harder than I thought it would be because of all these ridges. So there's these big ups and downs, which makes it hard for the pencil to go where I want it to. But overall, I'm happy with how it's turning out and I think it'll be worth it in the long run. After a few more lines, the mandala sketch is done and ready for paint. Look at these beautiful globs of paint. Sometimes, beginners to acrylic painting are afraid of mixing colors and prefer to use the color straight out of the tube. But when you mix your acrylics, you can create your own custom colors to get the exact shade or hue that you want. It's really not that scary, and it opens up all kinds of creative doors for you when you can mix your own colors. So definitely give it a go when you're painting with acrylics. By the way, you might have noticed all the books in the background. Traditionally, this area in our house would have been the dining room, but we converted it into a home library, where my husband and I have a collection of over 2,700 books. We mostly get them from used bookstores. We obviously love reading, and it turns out this is actually the perfect space for painting this llama because it's open and gets lots of natural light. Painting is such a relaxing experience for me. I just love how it feels to squeeze paint onto my palette, scoop it up with my paintbrush, and apply it onto my surface. It's such a tactile experience, and it's just not the same when I do digital art, for example. I love digital art, don't get me wrong. I especially love the undo button, so you can easily fix mistakes and change things. But in my opinion, nothing beats the feeling of playing with real life pigments and colors. It's a new day, and my goal is to finish painting this mandala. It's almost done, really. I just have a few more colors to add. Today, I brought up my comfy beanbag to sit on. And of course, it's hot pink. After painting in most of the mandala using acrylic paints, I switched to Posca's. These Posca 5M markers are perfect for adding these types of details. My favorite part of painting this mandala is getting into the state of flow. Once I pick the colors, it's just a matter of filling in each shape. So by this stage, it's pretty easy and I don't have to think too much about it. I can just sit back and enjoy watching the artwork come to life. 
My next step is to extend the mandala and create a design that goes up the back of the llama's neck. As you can see, my overall process for decorating this llama is to sketch my design and then paint it in. I'm designing each part of this llama piece by piece. That just seems to work for me, instead of trying to plan out the whole thing at once. This way, I can easily make changes as I go along. This is definitely the biggest 3D object I've ever painted. Well, except for my car, which I painted when I was 19. That was in the late 90s, before digital cameras were very common, so I don't have many pictures of my art car, unfortunately. But from that one grainy photo, you can see that I've always loved bright colors and detailed patterns, a love that clearly continues to this day. Would I ever paint a car again? Maybe. Who knows? Maybe that should be my next YouTube video. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, it would really mean a lot to me if you tap the like button and leave me a comment below. It's an easy way that you can help support my channel. And I would love to know what you think about my llama. I'd actually like to create more art videos like this. So if you like this kind of video, let me know that too. I'd love to hear your thoughts. By making this video, it feels like you're going on this art journey with me, and that's a really good feeling. Making art can be such a solitary process, so it's really nice to be able to make these art videos and connect with people in this way. So thank you so much for following along. If you want to see more of my art videos, subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications if you want to know whenever a new video drops. Now let's add some flowers to the back of the llama's head and neck. You'll have noticed by now that I'm back to using Posca's for painting in details. It's really tricky on these ridges, with all these ups and downs, because the marker nib doesn't want to go where I want it to some of the times, but mostly it's fine. And now the mandala is done! I'm really happy with how the design connects to the back of the llama's neck, and I really like these large flowers. Now I'm back for another day of painting, and today I'm gonna focus on painting designs on the llama's neck that go down across the chest and along to the top of the llama's legs. So it's time for more sketching. And then, instead of using acrylics, I decided it would be more convenient to use Posca's to paint in these flowers. Once again, I'm using the 5M nib, which is great because I can fill large spaces while also being precise at the same time. You've probably noticed that Posca colors are really bright and vibrant, and that's another thing that I love about them. I also enjoy using other brands of paint markers, especially Montana acrylic markers and Sharpie water-based paint markers. One thing I love about Montana paint markers is that they sell refills and replacement nibs, so you can use the marker again and again. I'll link to all the supplies I'm using below this video. To help me pick colors, I consult my Posca color chart, which has come in really, really handy throughout this whole painting process. If you want to learn more about Posca paint pens, I have a couple videos on my channel where I share my favorite tips and techniques. So if watching me use Poscas has piqued your interest in them, definitely check out my Posca videos. adding more details to these flowers. You know me, I can never stop adding details, but I just love the way it looks when different colors work in harmony together. So for these flowers, I'm doing some outlining as well as adding more petals and coloring in the centers of the flowers too. My goal is to make each flower look different. They have the same overall design, but unique colors for each flower. 
This is very different to the repetitive colors of the mandala, as well as the repetitive designs on the llama's legs. I felt like it would be good to shake things up a bit. As I paint in these flowers, my goal is to strike a balance with the colors. I'm contrasting cool colors with warm colors and light colors with darker colors to create a visual harmony. I love the challenge of making each flower have different colors. Since the background color of the neck transitions from orange to pink, I also have to be aware of how these flower colors look on top of the background color. So I'm keeping all this in mind as I choose the colors and paint these flowers. Wow, it is so cool to sit back and see how all these flowers look on the llama's neck and chest. I love it! And now I'm using a white Posca paint marker to fill in some of these empty spaces with more flowers and dots. I think these white flowers and dots help tie the whole thing together. White is neutral, yet it really pops against the colorful, saturated background. I can't believe I'm almost done painting this llama. All that's left to do now is paint the head. I'm a little bit nervous because the face is the most important part, but I'm gonna give it my best and see what happens. Once again, I chose to use Posca's to paint in these details. I like that Posca's dry pretty quickly, so it's easy to overlap colors and place colors next to each other without the colors bleeding into each other. I also like that there's no real prep involved when using paint pens. I just shake the pen, pump it to get the paint flowing, and then when I'm done, there's nothing to clean up. It's so convenient. Now it's sketching time. I'm gonna draw in a flower shape around the eyes and fill it in with Posca. I'm making up the face design as I go along. Instead of sketching out the whole design, I want to see how it looks first after I add each new detail and layer of color. This process feels very organic and allows me to make decisions in the moment. It's kind of tricky to try to make each side of the llama's face match the other side completely. In fact, one eye is accidentally a tiny bit higher than the other eye. But you wouldn't really notice, to be honest, because you can only see one side of the llama's face at a time, so I'm not too stressed about it. I'm really happy with it so far. I'm just gonna see how it looks if I make the iris a little bit bigger, and then I'll add the rest of the details to the face. I do like that better. Now I'm continuing to add more detail to the face. So 
I'm back for one more day of painting and hopefully it's the last day of painting as I finish off the details on the llama's face. When you look at photos of llamas, they have these beautifully long eyelashes, so I want to see if I can accentuate the eyelashes more in my llama. I'm really liking how this is looking. I think that making these lashes thicker and longer was the best move. So now I'm going to paint some details onto the llama's nose and mouth. And I'm not quite sure how this is going to look, so I'll just see how it goes. And if I don't like it, then I'll just paint over it. This part is tricky because of the texture of the paper mache. It's rather bumpy here, so it's hard to make the paint pen go exactly where I want it to. And also, the way the nose and mouth are sculpted define these features, so I have to follow the contours or else it'll look weird. I kind of think it looks a little goofy, but overall I'm happy with it. I'm almost done with this llama. There's just one more step, which is gluing stuff on. I love sparkly stuff, so this is the perfect excuse to add some bling to this llama. I'm using Gorilla Glue to stick on these flowers. I love how these flowers add even more dimensionality and character to my colorful llama. They're made from polymer clay and I bought them on Etsy a few years ago. They've just been sitting in my art studio waiting for the right project to come along, and now it has. These are paper flowers that I bought from Target. And now it's time for the gems. These are self-adhesive, but I stuck on a bit of glue anyway, just to be on the safe side. There's just one more thing I want to add. So I hopped in the car, went to Michael's, and found these cute flowers that are the perfect size to go next to the llama's ears. They're the perfect finishing touch. I can't believe I'm actually done. <laughs> Creating this llama was quite a journey. It took me over 50 hours from start to finish to paint this llama, and thankfully, I'm totally thrilled with how it turned out. Painting this was a real challenge because of its size, shape, and texture, but I learned so much along the way. And most importantly, I had the best time ever getting absorbed in the whole creative process. And did I tell you that while I was painting this llama, he told me his name is Lamington? So, dear viewers, please meet Lamington, my newest friend and confidant. I can tell that Lamington and I are gonna have a ton of fun together because we both share a colorful, quirky sense of style. So be sure to look out for him because you never know when he might pop up in a future video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you had as much fun as we did. If you're curious to learn more about Posca paint markers, check out this video where I share my favorite Posca tips and techniques. See you there.